Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, December the 20th, 2016. Just before we get into a very important breaking story this evening, wanted to take just a moment of, of your time. I know it's a busy season for a lot of people, different holidays, the Jewish Hanukkah, the Christians with Christmas and things of this nature here, but we do need your support now more than ever here at Israeli News Live as we try to step up to bring more information to you and getting uh, breaking stories out there as well as well as prophetic insights to these things and how they are affecting us in the world today. Uh, so if you would, take a moment of your time and visit us at IsraeliNewsLive.org and IsraelReturns.com. Of course, in the description below, I will put both links there as well as our address here in the Czech Republic at P.O. Box 46 there. So if you God lays it on your heart to support this. We do appreciate that. Let's get right into the story here. Very serious things. We're talking about breaking news that people are not going to tell you. Mainstream media definitely is not going to be telling you anything about what's going on. And John Kerry, above all people, don't want you to know about the news you're going to hear tonight here on Israeli News Live. World War III rising. Turkey scrambles 12 F-16 fighter jets showing Russia its military power. That happened at 5.30 p.m. local time here for us here in the Czech Republic, about 7.30 p.m. over there in Turkey there. They took off there. Nobody really knows why they did it there. And yet, you know, there is, there's tensions building between Russia and Turkey. You know, I know that Putin is trying to keep some normalcy there. He wants to keep a good relationship with Turkey, but Turkey keeps doing things that are obvious to Russia that Turkey is not their friend. Turkey is Russia's enemy there. We've pointed this out ourselves on Israeli News Live, showing that the coup was staged, showing that the United States was working with Turkey to do the coup in order to make it look like that Russia would be their savior, help them bail them out of a bad situation. But what was it all for to begin with? It was so Turkey could get military troops and power inside of Syria. We were looked at like idiots for bringing this news out. But it wasn't until Erdogan himself stated just recently that he had came to Syria in order to topple Bashar al-Assad so that, as he puts it, quote-unquote, the Syrian people, that's what he was doing it for, the Syrian people. Right, like the Syrian people really want another leader. No, they don't. But for some reason, the West and their allies there are wanting to topple Bashar al-Assad and it's for a different agenda altogether. Now, let's get real quick though and look at this. Now, we already know that uh, the Russian ambassador uh, uh, Karlov was assassinated yesterday. He was assassinated by a little thug that was actually claiming to be there to protect uh, the Russian ambassador there, shot him in the back. Now, I'm going to go to that in just a moment here. Shot him in the back as well, in the back of the head there. Killed him there in cold blood before later he was shot and killed, according to the report there. Now, some people say that it was a fake shooting. I worked in law enforcement six years, two years in uniform. I did about four to five years undercover narcotics as well as I've been involved in a lot of uh, uh, cases of murdered victims, killed people, etc. Different reasons why. And I'm going to share some information about that with you on one of the photos there that we got here to kind of uh, put that to rest as, as far as this being a fake, uh, fake incident. It is not a fake incident at all. But before I do, breaking still yet even more, Nova Russia. Nova Russia, a very well respected uh, Russian news source here. Uh, I, I've got it in the English language for you right now. It is actually a Russian uh, uh, paper. It is not written in English here. They have a breaking story that, 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 that has come out here on their, uh, on their side there. They stated here, and this is why the big fuss right now, Syrian and Russian troops drove into a trap in Aleppo with jihadist LIH 230 instructors of the U.S. Army, 54 British soldiers, 8 French and 2 Dutch specialists in artillery, the Americans asked Foreign Minister Lavrov to keep it secret for obvious reasons. Uh, says, I got this information from a reliable source, states the article. What do the NATO forces on the, on the side of terrorists, the LIH, terrorist organizations banned in Russian Federation, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, these rebels were shot, Christians executed, prisoners of war they've taken, captured civilians as hostages, shot those who tried to escape when the Syrian army entered the town and attacked buses sent to evacuate civilians, set them on fire, etc. And then they find out, they go into a town with 230 
a U.S. Army instructors, 54 British soldiers, 8 French, and a Dutch specialist? Are you serious? Not to mention the 14 that were named the other day at the United Nations by the, uh, the, the uh, ambassador to, uh, to Syria, who actually names them, including a Turkish member of intel uh, intelligence agency in eastern Aleppo, American, Israeli, Saudi, Qataris. You know, Russia is really starting to wake up who's really on their side. Turkey is definitely not on their side. But this is a news story you're not going to see in mainstream media. Oh, what are they going to do? Call it fake news because uh, Lavrov uh, was told to keep it quiet, keep it under wraps? Let me explain to you why. Even as the, um, uh, the ambassador to Syria was speaking at the United Nations the other day, he said this is why there was such a major uproar for a ceasefire. Remember that? United Nations, December the 9th. What was happening? Outrage. UN member states demand immediate halt to the attacks against civilians in Syria. Russia wasn't attacking civilians in Syria. Their men were in danger. Their troops were in danger. I thought it was only 14. No, we're talking about 300 plus military advisors, intel operatives, uh, 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 op, uh, uh, excuse me, intel operatives working inside of there for the Western backed governments, the Saudis, the Qatars, US, Israeli. U.S. had one intel officer, but they had well, how many there? What was it right here we have here? According to this report right here, 230 instructors of the U.S. Army, 54 British soldiers. No wonder why they want to get it. No wonder why the U.N. was in an uproar. Oh, we got to hurry up and get everything out, expressing outrage at the escalation of violence in Syria, particularly war-battered Aleppo, the General Assembly, the universal uh, body comprised of all 193 uh, United Nations member states today adopted a resolution demanding an immediate and complete end of all attacks on civilians as well as the end of all the sieges and war-ravaged country. Because all your men were there. And Russia was getting dangerously close to them, wasn't they? Weren't they? This is what it was all about. So... They burned buses sent to the city of Foa, Carefree, to evacuate the, Syri uh, the Syrian um, troops loyal to the president and mainly Shiite civilians in response to their own evacuation of troops from Aleppo. Nevertheless, it appears that British and American, French, and Dutch soldiers fought apparently with these extremist Islamic militants. The British. British fighting alongside of them. You will not hear about this from the BBC or the British or the U.S. government. You also will not hear from, from them about the weapon that was sent to a good, to a, to a good rebels, then transferred to the Islamist extremists. Not surprisingly, NATO forces could not distinguish with whom they fought. Of course they couldn't distinguish, because they were fighting alongside of whoever it was that was there. Now, you can they, they may want to call this fake news. Who knows what they're going to try to call it? The, the point of it is, Oh, look here. German news magazine, Der Spiegel, tried to defend himself from criticism of their own readers of what he shows in their report more emphatically for civilians in Mosul. When NATO bombardments support attack in Iraqi government forces than civilians in eastern Aleppo. But you guys, you can read the article yourself. I'll, I'll post it in the links here. You'll have to translate it, though. Nova Russia has reported this. It's also in an English uh, report that I got as well. Uh, my wife sent this to me in English. I wanted to see if I could get a confirmation of this. So Nova Russia, when I saw that they had published this article as well, then I realized that we had more credibility. And it may be the English version that I got was actually coming from Nova Russia. I still do not know who the original source of the article actually is. Uh, let's see. Is it? Okay. Yeah, freenations.net is reporting this. Let's see, but the news about Syria distorted beyond recognition. The West has almost no journalists on the ground, not least because of, of, of our so-called rebel allies simply would kill them. So it relies on the interpretation of the events that was sent untested persons from their iPhones. Local correspondents of the BBC, uh, XI, Lisi, and they go to the other names, for example, is actually located in Beirut at a distance of 206 miles. So they're using Beirut to bring these type things out. 
Uh, this according, uh, is according to Rodney Atkinson, who actually uh, wrote the article from what I can see here. Again, fr uh, freenation.net. Uh, that's where I saw it in English as well. NBC U.S. tanks returned to you. Okay, that's a different story altogether. Uh, let me share something else with you guys just real quick here. And I need to see if I can pull this back up. I saw this earlier. Uh, Egypt, Aleppo, uh, children. And I'm sorry to do this right here in the middle of the news broadcast. I found Here it is, very first one. I forgot where I'd actually seen this at. They were using children in Egypt. Five people were arrested in Egypt for using children to stage fake footage purported to be from Aleppo, according to Egyptian Ministry of Interior. All right? Now, the children are being questioned about this, and this was uh, this morning when I first saw this. I just haven't had a chance to bring this story out as of yet. Uh, well, here we go. We actually, independent.co.uk has actually wrote a story on it already. Egyptian police arrested five people for using children to stage fake Alep Aleppo footage. For who? Who's buying these stories, guys? Amateurish photos and video taken at demolition site show a little girl with red sta uh, uh, st stains on a white dress and bandages being interviewed about uh, life in the war-torn Syrian city of Aleppo. All right, let's see. I think we got a, a, a advertisement right now in the way there. It'll get out of the way in just a moment here. It says five people in port, in port said allegedly making uh, fake videos pointing to show the wreckage of, uh, of the airstrikes uh, in, uh, in the Syrian city of Aleppo have been arrested. The Egyptian interior ministry has said the video videographer here. Here it is right here. There, there, there's your video footage of it there. All right. And, of course, there it is, just like I showed you a moment ago. They were questioning them there. Anyway, the videographer is, uh, the parents of the two children who appear in the footage were detained after police managed to trail the would-be camera crew to a building site awaiting demolition. A statement on Monday said, the team reportedly admitted they had planned to distribute their work on social media, pretending it showed scenes of the injured and destruction in Aleppo, the embattled northern Syrian city which has fallen back under government control after four years of fighting between the regime and Sunni rebels. Sharing it on social media, right? Or maybe Western media. That happens to be where CNN picks up a lot of interesting things that we have been able to find as well with the help of some incredible journalists that are on the ground, such as Vanessa Bealey, uh, Ava Bartlett, uh, uh, reporters like that that are on the ground inside of Aleppo in Syria that bring out the true stories that are going on and not the fake stories that are coming out, whether it be by the white helmets that is nothing but, uh, I can't say that they're all bad, but for the most part, it looks like more of a terrorist organization than true rescuers of the uh, civilians that are inside the city there. That's what the reports have been showing coming out of uh, Syria, that they are not bringing out uh, true stories. The people are coming out saying that they're not there to help you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And do remember us at this time of year in your giving as God so lays it upon your heart. Thank you and God bless you for watching. Watch us at IsraeliNewsLive.org. We have been doing some changes on our website there. I think it'll be a blessing to you.